How hard is it to use a 3D printer? We're gonna find out because I've never used one and I bought this one and it just come in. Let's unbox it, see how hard it is to set up and get the first print. Should be interesting. Welcome to the Outlaw Effect. So this is the Bamboo Lab X1 series combo. I purchased this myself uh, out of my own pocket because I wanted to see how they worked and I was very interested. I was actually recommended to get the P1S system from a couple of friends, but I decided to go with this because it was kind of the biggest, best one. I thought for the first one, why not buy nice or cry twice or buy once, cry once. I'll give them this, it's well packaged. I really appreciate how well packed this thing is because these are not cheap. Lots of bubble wrap, styrofoam, everything to keep it safe. Quick start, that's what I like. I'm no stranger to uh, tools and things like that. So it's just straight away out of the box. Everything seems really nice. I like the fit and finish of this thing. That's nice, I like that. All right, because I got the combo, I got the AEMS system, I think is what they call it. Uh, basically where the spools set on top, self feeds uh, the uh, filament. I've got to take these bolts out so that we can take that out. All right, we got to put the AMS on top. Connecting out the cables to set this up is pretty simple. Uh, directions are very clear. All right, maybe it's marketing, but I did want the touch screen, which is one of the main reasons I went with the X1 Carbon is because it had that. So now I got to connect this up using this ribbon cable. Tight fit, I, my hands barely fit in there. My fingers certainly don't want to break and or bend anything. Not real sure. Instructions aren't real clear there. All right, setup was pretty simple. It's calibrating itself now, uh, just using this touch screen here, which is pretty cool. It's kind of reflective. I think they should have put a matte finish on there, but uh, overall, I like how easy it was to set up. Gonna run through its little course. It said take a few minutes and then we'll see on first print because that's the next step. Gonna load the filament into this AMS and get started because I have a lot of projects I really want to print with this and I'm not sure what the first one will be, if it'll make me do their thing but my first product is uh, something I've been wanting. This is supposedly normal. It's a little unnerving. You spent this much money on it, it goes and <laughs> started making all that racket. Went up in vibration and down in vibration. I think what it's doing is trying to check and make sure nothing's moving and wiggling and kind of compensating for that. Test calibration complete, start printing. This thing is cool. This machine, the X1 Carbon C or the X1C comes with three filaments, uh, support filaments, PLACF, it uh, looks like high temperature maybe, temperature resistant, and then basic PLA. I have ordered some more that will be here any minute now from FedEx. Before I got this, I wasn't really sure how these set in there and they just literally set in there. And then supposedly this auto detects the filament and will auto load it. Uh, we will see how that works. I'm not exactly sure. It's actually doing an update right now firmware, so we may have to wait till that's updated before it takes it. I didn't get on camera because it happened so fast, but filament is easy. On the touch screen, you go to the filament screen, go to the filament screen, and I just touched this and it pulled it right in. Uh, all you have to do is stick it right down in there and it pulls it in there. Pretty simple. It also told me it needed uh, some grease on these uprights, and of course it comes with the grease that you're gonna need. Uh, pretty easy to do, although I gotta spread it out and <laughs> make this thing run up and down and we'll see if it kind of spreads it on there. Not real sure if you're supposed to put it on there with a brush or what. The instructions do say to put a thin layer of this glue. They did include this, but I also bought some extra because I wasn't sure it was coming in the pack, but you don't have to buy any. It will come with your pack. It says put a thin layer on this uh, thing so that the PLA or this plastic stuff doesn't stick. Does that look like a thin layer? Let's try that. Interesting that it comes pre-programmed with some stuff you can print just with the touch screen without having to use the bamboo slicer program or whatever. And it also has an SD card here if you need to put programs on there. So I'm gonna go through this and find a program or a, a part that I wanna print first. And then there's a part that I really wanna print for myself here in the shop. Now the first print I want to do fast. I'm not looking for hours at a time. Uh, I wanna make sure that we get this thing done in a few minutes. So that's kind of my first idea. A lot of people print the little boat thing. Not really sure why. I feel like I'll probably need a scraper. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this scraper. Got the PLA loaded, print now. We're gonna do time lapse the whole thing. So it's pulling the plastic in there, the PLA. I don't know, I, I like this kind of stuff for a few reasons. One, it's challenging. I like that it challenges me. This is an addition to the shop that I want to eventually be able to make product. But for now, I'm just having fun with it. And that's one of the things I like about this. The CNC uh, so far has been my most fun tool that I've ever had in the shop because I've been able to do so many cool things with it. And I kind of think this is going to be one of those things that's just fun to have. Of course, there's lower models than this one. I wanted to go with this one because it had AMS in it. 
but I'm kind of wondering if I shouldn't have because my original idea was to have this inside that cabinet or inside that hut and it won't fit with the AMS, but it will fit uh, without the AMS. So I may wind up having to figure out how to offload this somehow to the side or something and build something like that. But uh oh, we're spitting PLA out the back. I think I did something wrong. I need to stop this because apparently you're supposed to connect a hose that I didn't connect and it's running out everywhere. How do we stop? Is there an emergency stop button? Stop, stop, all stop. <laughs> That's how you know you did wrong. So apparently uh, this has to go, maybe it was supposed to be like that from the factory and it wasn't. We got it going, let's try it again. It did pull it all back up in there so I didn't waste any, so that's good. Main thing I want this for is to make organizational type stuff for the shop. So my pack out inserts, also gonna make some uh, CNC parts, in other words, clamp and different parts and pieces for the CNC because Carbide 3D just released all of their files that you could use, so that's pretty cool. While this thing prints, uh, to give you my first impression overall of this, it was fairly easy to set up, less than 30 minutes, probably less than that, had I not been filming. Uh, the overall fit and finish of this, it comes almost assembled. You're basically just taking off some of the structural parts that keeps it sturdy and shipping. Now you have to set this on there and plug in a couple of wires and that's pretty much it. Now one thing I do love is this glass door i just feel like this makes it real premium feeling the aluminum siding uh, or case is one of the reasons i picked this too over the uh, other model that has a plastic siding and the touch screen although it's a little laggy uh, for a touch, modern touch screen i still like it and i like having the the picture of it and all this stuff it tells me how much is left and it's just an overall nice machine out of the box i think it just looks better this is a more kind of an apple type feel so i'm a, I'm a mac fan i have iphones and all that one thing i'd be curious to know is how important it is to keep this door shut with just pla i know that it's fairly important with abs and stuff like that but with just regular pla if i'm just doing basic stuff do i have to leave this door closed or can i open it up and film something i have to learn along the way it did tell me that there was an external disturbance of the machine it Maybe when I opened the door or something and I ignored it. So we'll see if that causes any issue on the first print. So the first uh, print, it said something about a printer bed bulge it detected and stopped the print. Not exactly sure what that means. I keep having this uh, error that keeps telling me that it may be hitting something. I'm not sure what that is. I gotta figure this out. One thing that made me choose the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon or Bamboo Lab in particular was the auto bed leveling. I don't have to mess with trying to figure out how to do that. I know older machines and some other machines you have to level the bed and it kind of makes printing more difficult this is more plug and play which is what i wanted i didn't want to have to try to figure out a bunch of stuff and try to relearn or learn new things uh, just to print some stuff i wanted to be able to get some files online somewhere whether that be etsy or thing thingiverse printables or any other place that releases their files and be able to just put it on this machine and go that's what i wanted so i think that's what i got it seems to be leveling the bed now uh, it may have been the grease kind of clumped up on there i wiped all that off and now everything seems to be working like it should also it was kind of setting on and off a little piece of eighth inch board kind of half on and off and it may have been jostling itself so i moved that back on the board i think we've got those issues figured out <laughs> this is awesome this guy is like printing out that little uh, scraper look at that how cool is that? This, oh, this is mind blowing. That you can literally do this stuff in your home now. Probably a weirdo, but I could watch this all day. All right, so the scraper file is done and we're gonna see how it worked out. It looks cool. First print. Oop, pop right off. That is so cool. All right, now I got an idea that, or a project that I wanted to do since this one come out so good. One week later. So after owning this for about a week, I've got a few points I would like to make. Number one, it was easy to set up and use, a lot easier than I thought. And number two, there are tons of free files out there, so you have zero to worry about if you're wondering how am I gonna design something. It's probably already been designed. I've been able to either purchase the files from different websites or a lot of free files from Thingiverse or printables that you can download and print, and I've done and it's pretty easy to print. One thing that I was a little bit shocked by was how long it takes to print things. I wasn't really shocked by it. I was just, I would like it to be faster. But three to five hours for most bigger prints that this thing can do is typical of print times. Not terrible, considering the fact that you're able to make custom products right here in your house, but faster would be better. One thing I'm absolutely amazed by is how awesome this thing is. I've had a lot of fun over the last week just doing all kinds of stuff. I made these custom boxes. Well, I didn't make them. I bought the file and printed them. I'll link to it in the description if you're interested. I have no affiliation with the guy, but I was able to make these custom inserts for my Milwaukee pack out and Milwaukee drill. That way I keep everything nice and tidy and organized. This thing is fantastic. I have a Shea Poco 5 CNC that I hear, use here in the shop and I've just recently got in this little clamp kit because they offer their 3D print files for free. I was able to download and print this organizer. That is fantastic. This didn't take that long, about an hour or so. 
Now, because I dove into this, I was like, how hard is Fusion 360 to use? So I downloaded the free version of that and then watched just a few videos, kind of got the idea of how it worked. Now this took me a few hours to basically design out, but I made this CA glue holder for my CA glue in the shop. I have an activator can and then multiple bottles of different colors and thicknesses of CA glue that I wanted to organize. So I was able to design this in just a few hours and print. Now this print took I don't know, five hours or so, so it took a while, but still pretty cool that I could design and do that right here in house. That's awesome. A few things I love about this thing, number one is that I can monitor on my computer, and if you put an SD card in there, it's giving you these time lapses. These are absolutely fantastic for content creators, and if you just want to see your build come to life. I love that feature and I'm glad they put that in there. And that's another reason I'm glad I went with this model is because it has a 1080p camera versus a 720p camera. It does need a little extra light. I have this little magnetic light hanging above it that's shining light down through the glass top, which does help. Getting the free files and printing them, I've had zero issues so far. I know there could be issues if somebody doesn't program their file right, but so far the things I've printed have been top notch. Everything's come out perfect and I'm just tickled pink. Now it has not been without its hiccups. I've had two issues, three issues, failures, if you want to call them. One, I kept getting a print failure saying that something was wrong with the bed. I really couldn't figure out what was going on. I wound up powering it off, powering it back on. I took this magnetic board thing inside and washed it with soap and water like they described because you use this glue stick to smear on there and so your print stick. I'm not sure if I just had too much buildup or whatever. Once I washed it, it was perfectly fine and worked next time I powered it on. Now I have the AMS system and this purple somehow unspooled and kind of wrapped around itself on the outside and got hung. So when it tried to pull it in there, it jammed and it caused an error that I could not clear and it would not recognize the purple anymore, even after I took it out and put it back in. So I'm not sure what was going on there. I wound up manually setting it back to purple and everything seems to be fine, but the auto detect didn't work. One more issue I had was the black filament got hung up too, but it said that it was lodged in the extruder. So I don't know how to clear that. So I was trying to pull it back and it never would do anything. I Googled it and it said to set the temperature to a certain temperature and it would melt it and then you could pull it out. It was a whole deal. It took me about 30 minutes to figure out, okay, what's going on. And then finally it, it come loose and everything's fine. It's one of those things that that stuff happens and you just kind of have to figure out how to manage that once it does happen. So far, nothing catastrophic has happened that I can't overcome myself with a Google search. Speaking of the extruder getting clogged up or stuck with the black filament, one thing you have to know is if you tell this thing to heat up to 170 degrees Celsius and you don't stop it, it'll just stay there. <laughs> I went in, went to bed, come out here about 10 o'clock the next day and it was still running. Fans were running. I was like, what's going on thing? Come over the screen. It's still heating up. So just be cautious of that. Don't leave this thing uh, like I did. And I'm hoping no, nothing got damaged. I'm assuming not, but it did stay at that temperature for almost 24 hours. So and another thing, this thing poops a lot. <laughs> That's what they call the poop chute on the back where the little pieces of filament, when it, if, especially if it's changing colors, it will go back and push some out. Of course, it's just dry plastic that falls out of the back, but you'll have to figure out a way to capture that if you get one of these. I was actually recommended to get the lower model of this one that doesn't have the touch screen by a friend or a couple of friends and the AMS, but I am glad that I went with this on my first one because I have enjoyed having this touch screen or this digital screen on here during the print. I do monitor on my computer, but also like to walk out here and see the progress from working in the shop. I can just glance over and see the progress of the print. I do like that. So I am absolutely 100% glad that I went with the X1 Carbon versus the lower model. And as far as different color prints. I haven't gotten into that yet, but I do like the fact that I do have that option if I want it. Now, if I start adding more of these to do more production work, then I will likely get the lower models because I don't really need them as far as all these extras if I'm just batching things out. But I do like the fact that this has glass and aluminum and it just looks really good and it has that screen. No regrets. Now, if you're like me and you were concerned about being able to use one of these or to get quality products out of it, or you're gonna tear something up, I can put that to ease for you. If somebody like me who has a minimal experience with this type of stuff, zero experience with the 3D printer, a little bit of CNC experience, but doesn't really translate, this was easy to use and easy to learn. I have zero issues with it. I do not regret getting it and just getting free files and printing them here. There's tons of stuff out there depending on your needs and your wants, like you can print figures or you can also print organization items and parts and pieces and tools. The options are endless with this thing and I'm 100% glad I have one in the shop now. If there's anything specific you'd like to know about this Bamboo Lab X1C 3D printing machine, let me know in the comments and I'll answer you 
the best I can. I can see a whole lot of 3D printing in my future and I'm gonna put this thing through the paces over the next several weeks. I'll do a follow-up video if you're interested, let me know in the comments. Also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that new video when it does drop. In the meantime, you do me a huge favor if you click and watch that next video. That will help this channel more than anything else you could do.